Master Doll Dreamer Jerry Uribe demonstrates how we make our posable bodies here at the Doll Studio. There's a complete list of supplies included in the written instructions. We have here, among the other supplies, the sewn body, the bisque body parts, and the armature, ready to assemble into a keepsake playmate body. The first step is to attach the feet to the armature. Jerry is stuffing polyfill into the foot around the armature to hold it in place, leaving space at the top for hot glue. She's aligned the top of the foot with the mark on the armature. Please refer to the written instructions about where to mark the armature. Meanwhile, the glue gun has been heating up. Jerry fills the opening around the armature with hot glue, applying some glue to the upper surfaces of the porcelain legs. The next step is to pad the spine. Jerry is wrapping a piece of knit fabric around the spine of the armature. wrapping, she stitches the edge down to hold the padding in place. The next step is wrapping the legs with quilt batting. Jerry cuts two pieces of quilt batting to the predetermined size of about 5 inches wide and 28 inches long. Then she spreads some glue along the leg armature. She presses the edge of the batting into the glue and begins wrapping the leg carefully and firmly. finishes the wrapping by gluing down the edge of the batting. With both legs wrapped, 
Jerry adds some extra padding and stuffing around the knee. She tucks some polyfill between the layers of batting at the knee. She also wraps some extra polyfill around the armature at the gap between the batting and the porcelain leg. Now it's time to attach the cloth body starting with the legs. The body is inside out. Jerry will use copper wire to secure the cloth body to the porcelain legs. She cuts two pieces of 20 gauge wire in about nine inches long. She slips the cloth legs over the feet and works them up to the top of the porcelain legs. a casing line on the fabric that she uses to line up the fabric with the groove in the porcelain leg. She wraps the wire around the leg so that it lines up with the groove. And then twist the wire until the wire starts to grip the cloth. Now she makes some adjustments before the final twisting and tightening of the wire. Jerry has learned just how much to twist to secure the fabric without breaking the wire. She trims the wire to about a quarter inch and bends the end. After wiring both the legs, Jerry is working the knee section up over the batting to get the turn started. She is about to turn the body right side out. how nice and smooth it fits over the legs. Now Jerry is using a long needle to needle sculpt the stuffing at the knee. The purpose of this is to fluff and arrange the stuffing so that it fills out the knee area and especially fills in the gap above the porcelain leg.
First, Jerry put some stuffing down into the seat of the body. We decided to add some weight to the seat to give the doll stability when seated, so Jerry is making two weights to insert into the seat. She makes little sacks out of sections of knee-high stocking. She fills the sacks with a couple of handfuls of BBs. Then she ties them shut, wrapping and twisting the excess stocking, making up two neat round packages. good balance. Hmm, nice wrong bottom. Okay. The next step is to sew up the back seam, closing it with a ladder stitch using strong button thread. After she sews the back seam closed all the way to the top, Jerry threads the needle again. Starting at the lower back, just above where the seat has been stuffed, she takes deep stitches catching the padding along the spine so that the armature is attached to the fabric of the cloth body along the center of the back. Jerry takes several good sized puffs of polyfill to stuff into the belly to make a smooth, nicely shaped torso. Then she turns the body over and stuffs some polyfill on either side of the spine. We don't like to stuff our bodies too firmly. We want them a little bit soft and cuddly and flexible so the armature can move and bend easily and hold a pose. Now the elastic for attaching the head should be attached to the armature. Jerry cuts a length of elastic about 16 inches long and loops it around the armature at the top of the spine. There's an illustration on page 7 of the written instructions. For this demo, Jerry is using the second method described in the written instructions. 
She's sewn a casing in the arm and she's putting a piece of wire through the casing with the fabric arm piece right side out. Then she aligns the cloth left arm to the porcelain left arm so that the wire will slip into the groove in the porcelain arm. Note how she lines up the underarm seam with the thumb. When everything is lined up properly, she twists the wire so that it grips the fabric and settles into the groove, tightening around the arm. Then she trims the wire to about a quarter inch and bends it to lay flat against the arm. Next, she pulls the fabric back, turning the arm inside out and exposing the opening of the porcelain arm. she will attach the arm to the armature. She puts some stuffing into the opening and adjusts the arm so that the upper edge lines up with the mark on the armature. When she's satisfied with the placement, she stuffs around the armature to hold it in place. She leaves some room inside for the hot glue. Finally, she fills the cavity around the armature with the hot glue and applies some glue to the upper surfaces of the arm for a good bond. Now Jerry adds some extra stuffing to the chest area to make that area firm enough to support the shoulder plate and the head before sewing the top of the torso closed. She turns the raw edges under along the top of the opening. Keeping the elastic in the center, pins the opening closed. Then she hand stitches along the top edge from shoulder to shoulder. feel that we use is full and fluffy with long fibers that make it easy to shape. This is essential for the method we use for wrapping the arms. This technique will take a bit of practice. Jerry knows how much stuffing to grab to wrap the arm. She takes
makes a good sized piece that will wrap the length and thickness that she wants for the arm. She has stretched and shaped it into a rough sort of rectangle shape that fits the space of the armature that she's wrapping. She just starts wrapping the piece around the armature and continues to wrap firmly while turning and twisting the polyfill with her hands until it's securely and smoothly attached to the armature. When it's wrapped firmly enough, it will stay in place. When the stuffing is securely wrapped, Jerry pulls the cloth up over the armature until it's right side out and fits smoothly over the arm. Now she uses the sculpting needle to fluff and smooth the stuffing at the elbow. Jerry aligns the underarm seams of the body with the underarm seams of each arm. Then she arranges the fabric at the top of the arms to lay smoothly over the top of the body. Next, she turns the raw edges of the arm fabric under and pins it to hold it in place. Then, starting where the underarm seams meet, she stitches the arm fabric to the body, following the edge all the way around to the underarm again. Okay, the second arm has been stitched. Jerry slips the shoulder plate on, threading the elastic through the neck opening. The shoulder plate will be held in place when the head is attached. Jerry pins the elastic to the back of the torso to keep the to shoulder plate secure until the head is attached. can be attached by slipping the elastic through the holes in the top of the head. Two holes have been cut in the top of the head large enough for threading the elastic through. Actually, one hole would be sufficient if it is cut close to the large hole. We used to cut two holes, but now we typically cut one. 
Jerry threads one piece of elastic through one of the smaller holes. The other elastic comes out of the large hole. Jerry makes a knot and pulls the elastic tight before finishing with a square knot. Some of you may recognize the head we used in the demo. If not, this is our little Jenny. Jerry applies some craft glue to the edges of the page, then places the page on the flat part of the head. Later, she applies a bit of glue to the front hairline and a bit over the ears. We like to use a minimum amount of glue just in case we want to remove the wig or change the wig later. The wig is turned inside out. Jerry lines up the center front edge of the wig cap with the center front hairline where the glue is. She holds it in place while carefully turning the wig right side out. She gently adjusts the position of the wig while the glue is still wet. Keepsake Playmate Bodies at the Doll Studio. It's so much fun to see these little bodies take shape. And these little characters come to life. 